In the last video, I talked about picking up the FX30 and playing around with it, but I forgot to actually show you the device. So let's do that in today's video. So here's the FX30. It's a pretty cool device. I actually, I'm enjoying it more than I thought I would considering it doesn't have an EVF. So one of the things that um, I like about the camera is the grip. It, it, the grip is very deep. It's kind of like my Nikon. And I pretty much walk around with the camera like this. I, I really need to get a strap to put on my hand or one of those, um, yeah, one of those hand straps. So what I got also was the 11 meter, 11 millimeter, 1.8 lens. It's pretty cool, pretty small. It's a nice wide angle lens for vlogging. The other lens that I picked up is the 16 to 35 f4. And I kind of decided to use this one as my 16 to 50, 60, or the 24 to 70 equivalent lens, but more it's going to be like 24 to 50. The weight of it is pretty nice. Um, I'm actually happy with this and you know it's so funny that you've been looking around heavy lens most of your life because I've been shooting Nikon for 20 years and other cameras in the past. One of the things that caught my eye about these lens, well this lens in particular and some of the lens I'm showing is that they have power zoom. Now power zoom is a thing that some cameras had back in the old days and we're talking about regular SLR cameras. I had a Yashica and had a power zoom lens for it. It's pretty cool. No push pull like in the old days, no twisting. It was just, you know, slide the lever and you zoom. It's kind of cool that they brought that back. Not something that I thought I'd ever see again, but on these smaller cameras, especially when you're filming video, when you're starting to twist the lens, well, twist the barrel to focus or to zoom, it has a tendency to go up and down. Let me set up this camera with the lens so you can see what it's like. Now, there's one annoying thing. Uh, you know, every camera manufacturer have their own way of uh, putting on the lens. But I didn't like the fact that the button is like right here by the grip. I'm used to pushing the button over here in my Nikon for different um, function buttons for, you know, using for whatever purpose you need. So having it back there and, you know, twisting it, it just seems kind of counterintuitive. But it's Sony's thing, it's what they do, it works for them. The balance is actually pretty good on this setup. I walked around town most day with this and it was pretty cool. Of course, when I got indoors, then I had a bit of a challenge, I had to switch to the 11 millimeter because that was wider and lighter. This being an F4 lens, taking it inside, you lost some light. And it's not everywhere, it all depends of course on the lighting conditions, but for what I was, uh, the area that I was at, I needed a little bit more light. So I'm hoping that Sony does a 16 to 50 or 55 or whatever they do for that standard lens F2.8 so that if they can make something this smaller, you know, I'd be kind of cool with that because this is a pretty nice size. Even if it's a little bit bigger, the whole idea is balancing and having something that, you know, is not too heavy when you decide that you want to do a vlog. I think I'm going to get one of those little Sony sticks to kind of put on there, but I've kind of tested it like this. It's not too bad holding for a long period of time. So yeah, and with this lens, <laughs> it's like a dream. This is really the real vlogging lens and this weighs like nothing. Oh yeah, the handle, forget about that. So I kind of jerry-rigged the handle with my old daily microphone. And as you can see, it's not the XLR version. This one is the one that I had. The whole idea was at some point I'm gonna go vlogging, put the camera in front of me. But when I use it with the Nikon, it's a bit heavier to balance around and walk around with, so I kind of gave up on that idea. But the handle actually is made of some kind of polycarbonate material. You can hear it. It's, it's not a bad thing. 
I wish it was metal, but then I think to myself, if you shoot it in the winter time and you hold on to metal, it's gonna be pretty cold. So, or oh, not even winter, when it's kinda cooler. So this is not bad. Um, I'm gonna do a test with the DD microphone on top of it to see what it's like and also utilizing the internal microphone. There is something that I like about the Sony uh, ecosystem. They make a bunch of different microphones for this camera. Well, pretty much it works on all their cameras. That goes into their um, hot shoe or interface shoe, or so they, they call it. It allows you to plug into the interface shoe without having to plug a cable into the side of the camera. I find that cool because now having a camera with a flip out screen, you're worried about having some cable in front of you that's kind of blocking the screen. Granted, you're not looking at it all the time, but every so often, you know, you may want to peer at it to see what's going on. So to have that, you know, really clean look. Microphone here, nothing plugged in the side. Yeah, that's great. And as far as ports, I have to say that the big thing I love about this one is the fact that the HDMI port is a large one. It's not that tiny thing that you have on Canon cameras, but I would say that uh, Nikon did a better job with theirs and it's a uh, mini. Not bad, but you know, have a full size HDMI actually works out because there are a lot more cables that are designed for that kind of use. I did think about Canon at some point because I heard the autofocus was good also, but at the time in looking at it, the camera still reminded me of DSLRs. And I wanted something that was more different. You know, the mirrorless design of Sony and Nikon cameras have been pretty nice. And that kind of design, you know, it worked for me. The grip on my Nikon is really good. The one thing that I thought that I may have an issue with on this camera was the grip. No, yep, it works fine. The, the body balance as well. Actually, the body's about three ounces lighter than the Nikon when empty. Put the battery and so on in it. It's uh, 1.6 ounce, one pound six ounces, which is what the um, C62 is without the battery and memory card inside of it. So there's some pluses there in moving to this platform. The thing that I've been having some challenges with is every time I decide that I want to capture something. And I have to admit, being a photographer, the first thing I think about when I see something is put the camera up to my eye to shoot it. Or at least to look at it and kind of see, you know, how it looks and then decide to frame it. The couple of days I spent with a camera in Singapore, I got used to utilizing the screen. It was kind of odd because I pretty much used the lens like this and, you know, you got the camera to use with the flip out screen. That's the main purpose, right? You want some things you can see stuff when recording. But then also, I wish I had put the screen from the A7R5 on this thing. You can tilt it out a lot of times when you need to, you know, those low shots, but you don't really need to flip it out. You want to remain incognito somewhat. Because as soon as the screen is flipped out, people are looking like, well, what is he doing? What is he filming? And sometimes you're in a situation, you just want to capture stuff. You just, you know, don't want to bother anybody. This actually is kind of cool. I had this with a smaller lens, um, the last video you saw of the internal thing at the hotel. It was just sitting there in my bag, shooting the video. I think a couple of people realized that I was shooting because the lights are on in the front, so they could tell that, you know, I was recording. But other than that, it's, you know, it's pretty small. And with a smaller lens, people don't pay much attention. It's like people with iPhones, like, eh, no big deal. But for some unknown reason, people shoot cameras, they get kind of freaky. Who knows? Now. Saying that I kind of been getting comfortable with this, as I'm utilizing it more, I'm getting used to the screen. And one of the things I wish was that it had a larger screen. I've been saying that for the longest time, but yeah, the screen is smaller than Nikon's. You figure, if you're gonna go full cinema at this point, figure out a way to go to a four inch screen, five inch screen. You know, it'd be nice to have something on the back of the camera. I pretty much set this into um, Sunny or Sunshine, I forget what the actual mode is called but basically it's to use the brighter setting for when you're outside. The lighter settings doesn't work for me inside or outside. And I have to use my glasses a lot when I have this on, when I'm using the screen. So there is that. Do I wish I had a viewfinder? Sure, but that means going to A7 IV, A7R5, something along those lines, which at this juncture, 
you know, I thought about it. I did see like the 87R4 was priced less than this camera in Thailand. Don't know if it's sale or something. And I really give it some thought that maybe I would get it. But then, now that I've had this camera, I like it. So, it's working for me so far. You saw some of the footage from the camera. It actually takes great photographs. Initially when I looked at it, and I still, I still kind of think that I prefer the Nikon images more, but as I started to review the folders even more, it seems as though um, it kind of has like a muted look to it, and I don't know what that is. So yeah, it's kind of weird, but even though they don't have that bright pop to it, it actually looks pretty nice. And I've been looking at some of the folders again, I'm like, Wow, this thing really, really looks pretty good. I mean, I think I set it up to um, HDR photos in some instances and they came out awesome. photos that I've been taking on my iPhone they look pretty cool and being able to do this on a camera man it's pretty nice I tried that um, high efficiency photo setting that they have on the camera and I couldn't open them initially on my um, laptop so I have to figure out that out that that gets me to some of the things that annoy me about the camera but I'm gonna do that now with the video likes and dislikes I'll do a test with both cameras so you guys can see what that looks like I have to get around to comparing the image quality while I'm enjoying this one right now. I haven't actually gotten around to the point where I've actually tested them side by side to see what they look like. I've just been looking at the images on my computer. So, you know, we'll get around to that. All right, if you have any questions about the camera, any tests that you'd like me to run on it, let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Stay frosty. Yeah.